UN envoy James Larzen has earlier this week asked China to just abide by the recommendations in a UN report regarding the atrocities China is committing toward a, well, well over a, a million Uyghurs in the Xinjiang province. We know that they are in re-education camps and we know the conditions are far less than humane. This has been going on for years. It's not the first time and we're not the first country that the UN has called upon China to release these people or at the very least treat them humanely or let independent viewers into the country so that they can at least be made aware of the conditions there on the ground. Of course, China has for many years forbidden this and they're not changing their tune. Check out their response today. Imagine our shock, Australia. According to China, we're the ones who are full of human rights abuses here in Australia. Lin Yang, re respondent from the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs, says Australia, long plagued by systemic racism and hate crimes, have severely violated the rights of refugees and immigrants and left Chinese indigenous, not Chinese indigenous people, left indigenous people with vulnerable living conditions. Australian soldiers have committed abhorrent crimes in Afghanistan and other countries during their military operations overseas. These Western countries turn a blind eye to their own severe human rights issues at home, but in the meantime, put their fingers point their fingers at other countries. This says a lot about their hypocrisy on human rights. Can you believe it? Doesn't this remind you yes, of can. the famous Marxist <laughs> comment saying you must accuse your enemy of doing what you're doing while you're doing it just to confuse people. Of course, this was said <laughs> on state media in China, so no one would doubt what this guy's saying. But take a look at Albanese today. He wasn't having a bar of it. We, of course, will always stand up for Australia's interests. And when it comes to China, we've said we'll cooperate where we can, we'll disagree where we must, and we'll engage in our national interest. And we've raised issues of human rights with China. We've done that in a consistent and clear way. Very oh, diplomatic. Nicely guy. said, Mr Albanese. Yes, your favourite guy. <laughs> yes. There he is. Standing up to we China. We must be Boom. diplomatic at all times. Oh, come on. <laughs> now, now you're being racist and ableist. <laughs> uh, this is, hey, I he, love it he's when the one who accused an opposition <laughs> minister of having Tourette's. I love, it when, I love it when China does this. They pull the race card out all the time. All who the says time. they're not learning stuff? They're just oh, yeah. looking at all the little wokesters, all the little identity politics. They call mm. them ID polls for the kids. Uh, all the little identity politics activists in the US and on campuses here. They go, oh, you can just call anyone a racist, can you? Oh, OK. I don't like you. You're a racist. <laughs> And, it, and it's a learning game and they're doing it and it's just absolutely hilarious. Soon they'll be invading us for being so racist. Well, that's it. They don't enslave, need to. They've already got so much us. soft power. Yeah, they'll put us into re-education camps and force us to build cheap electronic devices and sell them on Timu yep. until we get educated <laughs> about just how racist we are. Exactly. All I in the name it. of anti-racism. I mean, seriously. Yeah. And, and, the, and the sad thing is that there are probably people out there who, who do believe this. But we, we well, Certainly anyone this. in China would. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we kind of have this coming for us, as you alluded to, Joe, because we denigrate ourselves, not we, I mean, those of us sitting on the desk tonight, excluded, but as a country, mm. we so often denigrate ourselves and so many people who live here say that we are a racist nation. If you say something enough times, people will start to believe it. You know, people start to believe their own bull, S-H-I-T, right? Um, and so if you sell that message hard enough overseas, well, yeah, people will start to think Australia is a racist country. But I think it should be pointed out, and, and these are only the most recent numbers I could find, but in June 2022, there were roughly 600,000 Chinese-born people living in Australia. Not an insignificant number. At that time, that was about 2.5%, of the Australian population was Chinese-born. Now, the latest numbers for Australians living in China I could find was 2010. So you may assume there are a few more living there now. But 600,000 Chinese in Australia, how many Australians do you reckon there were in China? 
13,000. I mean, what does that tell you? <laughs> We're such a horrible, racist country that all the Chinese people want to come and live here. They send their kids to our universities because, of course, they want to send their kids to be taught how real racism works, don't they? I mean, they don't even believe it themselves. It's simply to score points. It's utter nonsense. But, look, if, if we keep saying we're a racist country then we may as well believe we're a racist country. And everyone else may as well believe Oh, my believe God, it. guy. Oh, sorry. I know we've had a terrible... I know there's been a couple of glitches this week, but I've just realised we've done it again. This quote, um, Australia long plagued by systemic racism and hate crime. It's not the Chinese foreign ministry at all. No. It's Lydia Thorpe. It's Laura Tingle. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, guys. I, I copy and pasted the wrong text into the group email. 